Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Volatility Box Report for November 12th, 2019. We are TOSIndicators.com, home of the Volatility Box. Today, once again, we'll focus on looking at the markets with an aggressive lens. And so using that same aggressive lens, we had a trade set up in the Russell futures, and this was good for $120 across both of our contracts. We didn't get the sort of follow through that we were looking for. And so we took off both of our contracts before the market closed for 1.2 points apiece. We also had one trade that set up in the copper futures market. And just as a reminder, we're still studying this market and that's why there's an asterisk here. Um, but we'll spend a good amount of time today looking at the copper futures trade and seeing if there's anything that we can take away from that almost as lessons to start to apply to a broad variety of markets and signals, not only using our futures volatility box, but also using our stock volatility box. And we'll just define this sort of the more aggressive method that you can use the volatility box to start to trade and wait for uh, confirmations before you participate in the market. And so with both of those aggressive entries today, you had a total PL of $257.50, but really the copper uh, futures market is one that we're still studying. And so the Russell uh, was the one trade that we had for today. Tomorrow on the calendar, we have an event in the morning, which I think will set the tone in terms of volatility for the rest of the day. And that's around uh, the CPI numbers. And so if you happen to be trading for some reason at 5.30 a.m., then uh, the conservative volatility box is really what our trade plan calls for. Or you can try and play them, uh, some of these moves a little bit more aggressively using the technique that we'll talk about today. But do recognize and just sort of accept that fact internally that you are using a more aggressive method, which does have a greater probability of stopping you out if that does happen. So accept that risk before you take on that trade so you can manage your emotions during that trade. And so outside of that, we also have Powell speaking at 8 a.m. Pacific, and then we have the federal budget balance. And so my hypothesis is the CPI numbers will help dictate that first hour aggressive volatility box test since this event is before then. And I think that first half hour should help dictate which sort of volatility we'll be seeing in the market for the rest of the day. Uh, and then I think specifically for uh, the Powell uh, testimony, uh, we may want to be on the conservative volatility box if you'd like to play it just sort of safe and without having to switch back and forth. But if you are looking to trade this a bit more aggressively, then I think the technique tonight may be useful. So for tonight, let's start by actually looking at the bond charts first. Since there are a few trades in the bonds uh, that set up, but were entries for us. Right? And so if we use our aggressive volatility box test, we see that uh, neither side of uh, the volatility box was breached. And that was our permission to continue to use the aggressive volatility box. Now we sent out a note to all of our members right around 8 a.m. Pacific, letting you know that uh, President Trump was scheduled to speak at 9 a.m. Pacific, and that it may be safer to switch on over to the conservative volatility box or if you wanted to play this on a bit more aggressive level, then uh, use the dynamic RSI color candles in conjunction with the volatility box to help you find entries. And so the one entry that set up in the bonds, or at least the first one, uh, was right before the actual event. And that's the reason why this wasn't a valid entry for me. We had President Trump scheduled to speak in just a few minutes, and the bonds weren't the market that uh, I think we wanted to be focusing on today, especially after we've seen that the bonds typically go into the clouds as of recently. And so this is the first uh, pass that we had on the bonds and then if you did take this you had your nice move down in which you hit your t1 and so you did hit your target and then you had your next entry which was an edge of our entry which is why it wasn't valid for us which also gave you a really nice move down and so both shorts today worked out fairly well if you did happen to catch them but for us we ended up passing on both of those trades now if we head on over to the russell the one trade that set up in the russell was as price fell into our volatility box uh, entry line right here and this was towards the edge of an hour, but not quite there. This was the 50 candle. And so our trade was still valid here. And if we uh, come down now to a one minute chart, and this is the approach that I think has been uh, productive if you are looking to use these dynamic RSI candles, is as soon as we're approaching an entry is to switch on over to a one minute chart, almost to zoom in. Since at this point, you're trying to precisely just time your entries uh, and try and uh, get any price better than our volatility box entry line, right? And so in this case, you went from red to yellow to green. And so if you ended up using that as a confirmation, then really the yellow candle is where uh, you started looking for an entry and you didn't really get another opportunity at uh, our volatility box entry line. 
right? However, if you follow sort of the plan in this case, which is just leaving your orders parked. And so if we take a look at, at what the Russell then actually did, even on a five minute chart, we had this nice follow through move up. We didn't get cl uh, we came close to hitting our target, but not quite there before we had this reversal into the close. And as of right now, this trade is still making its way either to uh, its target or its stop if you're assuming the afternoon risk. For us, we ended up taking off our contracts right around the afternoon for 1.2 points. And now let's take a look at copper futures, which I think are a little bit uh, exciting to take a look at today in particular. So in the copper futures market, after we had President Trump speaking, we had a really nice volatility reaction, right? This is what we were hoping to see in the indices where we had an opportunity to fade that. It didn't unfortunately come there, but our copper futures did set up a move using our aggressive volatility box. And for all of our uh, volatility box members, we sent out that note that lets you know that if you are using the aggressive volatility box, then these RSI candles might be useful, right? And so now let's take a look to see how they could have been useful in this particular instance. So as soon as we have this nice move down lower, that's where once again, you zoom in. And so we switch on over to our one minute chart and we're looking for our one minute chart to signal to us that price is starting to uh, reverse. The way we do that is very visually easy to see. We go from red to orange, which now tells us that our selling pressure started to halt. And after this orange candle, you can really start to be looking for entries which fit your risk parameters. And so one entry might have been the actual volatility box entry line if you were comfortable with uh, the risk that that entailed. But now let's say that you wanted a slightly better entry, especially after you had the opportunity of seeing this free information now that you're waiting for these colored candles that we had breached into the clouds, right? The beginning of the clouds may suddenly be where you're looking for an entry and you had plenty of entry points. You had one, you had two, you had three. Um, and if we keep zooming in, you can see that we chopped sideways until then we ultimately had a nice move up higher. And now if we measure to see what I think this does to not only um, uh, our confidence level in these trades, since we now have confirmation, but we're also able to get slightly better entries on some of these more aggressive markets. And so in this particular instance, if you use the beginning of the clouds as your entry point, then really your risk was about 50 bucks, right? Which is really manageable. That's almost micro level risk on a full size uh, coppers futures contract in which your first move might be um, that first level. So once again, you're making a one-to-one -one risk reward. So you're trying to make 50 while risking 50, but your second contract may very well be what would have been our target using our normal volatility box parameters which in this case was 35 ticks and we ended up going that same 35 ticks which from our entry would have then been 50 ticks in total giving you that extra 15 ticks in profit while you ended up shrinking your actual risk on the trade which i think is uh, pretty cool and so if we start to apply something like this uh, on things like our gold market uh, things like our copper futures market things like our bonds um, then we may see that we get better entries. Now, there will be plenty of times in which you may miss trades if you are trying to get an entry always better than the cyan entry line, especially if we don't fall deep into the clouds. And even if we do fall deep into the clouds, there is no guarantee by the market letting you know that we are going to retest this level. There's no guarantee that we're even going to retest this level, right? At this point, you're taking what is acceptable in terms of risk to your account, what you are willing to take, uh, and that is the trade that you've accepted to take on. And once you put on your orders, you've put on your orders and that is a trade that you're letting now work in your favor. And so hopefully this starts to give you an idea of how you can use the volatility box in conjunction with the dynamic RSI candles to start to trade a bit more aggressively, especially when say some events might call for us to be on the conservative volatility box. I know there's plenty of you that are aggressive traders that really enjoy taking on that aggressive risk. And you might be using something like the micros to scale in where it makes sense for you to be able to trade that aggressively. Well, now all of a sudden you can start to use things like these candles as confidence information and now you have better areas of entry using the same high probability trade and that helps you get a better risk to reward. Hopefully this video was helpful in helping you identify how we can start to more aggressively trade some of these markets. I think there's plenty of opportunities that have started to arise using both our stock and futures volatility box. And now we no longer have the issue that we've typically had, which is a more boring sort of day, right? Today was boring from stocks, but we now had futures entries. And I'm hoping that this pattern continues where we as traders can now start to use the volatility box to start trading with an edge at the edge in a variety of different markets. So with that, I'll see you all in tomorrow's nightly update. Take care, everyone, and good luck trading tomorrow.